Hey everybody, this is Jim Prusak, physical therapist and owner of the Pain PT. And today we're going to talk about the placebo effect and its role in healing chronic pain. And this is really important because for the longest time, the placebo has gotten a really bad rap as if it's something negative or it's fake and not real. But we know now from the science coming out, and there's a lot of people that are learning the study of the placebo now, we know that the placebo is the brain changing. It's actually a real effect. So the placebo is real and it works through our brains. And what I want to show you today is some of the research showing you the power of the placebo in certain um, procedures such as surgery and pills. But also, more importantly, I want to go over and show you how you can harness the power of your own placebo using your own brain to heal. And this is what we talk about here at the Pain PT. So this study here looked at the effects of sham surgery and the placebo. It was a review study in 2017, looked at six randomized controlled trials involving 277 people. All these surgeries were, were fake. They weren't actually real surgeries. And what they found from the current review was that in comparison to real surgery, sham surgery provided similar results in pain and disability. And one of the studies is quite well known. It was a study done, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and it looked at the role of knee debridement, removing piece of the meniscus or cartilage that might have been torn. And what they did was they did an actual real procedure on people's knees, and they also did a fake procedure where they just put two portholes in the knee, but no actual surgery. And what they found were that the results were very much the same. And so the question is, what is happening here? So we need to look closer to the brain than we do to the tissues. And this is what the authors say here. They say pain is complex. And recent research highlights the finding that pain is more likely to be a measure of potential threat than of true tissue health. And I talk a lot about this on um, some of my other YouTube videos about x-rays and MRIs of the joints and how a lot of times the data it doesn't add up to a direct correlation with pain. And so the authors here go on to talk about and state that patients who believed that faulty tissues had been surgically corrected experienced the same relief as patients who had undergone real surgical correction of purportedly damaged tissues. So our beliefs alone have the power to turn off pain. And how they do this is through our brains. And so they say this here, they say the fact that sham surgery yields results similar to real surgery highlights the powerful contributions of the brain to pain modulation. So there's a lot of research out there about taking fake sugar pills or placebo pills and comparing that to pharmaceutical pills, right? There's tons of studies on that. But they've gone even further now to where they actually tell the person they're taking a placebo pill. They know they're taking a placebo pill. It's a sugar pill. It has the word placebo written all over it. But people still have a placebo effect even when they know they're taking a sugar pill. So this really speaks to the power of the subconscious brain and the subconscious mind and how it learns the power of the placebo. This was done in 2016, a randomized control trial, and it was the first one to really show benefits of taking an open label placebo in chronic low back pain. There had been some previous studies done, four of them, and they all did show an effect of people taking a known placebo, meaning they knew they were taking a sugar pill and they still had uh, therapeutic effects. In fact, one of the studies was a controlled trial with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and that showed significant clinically meaningful benefits over controls. But what they found here was the people that were taking these sugar pills and they knew they were taking them, they had a 30% additional reduction in pain. And now that's significant when we look at pain amounts, 30%. What was also interesting from the study was that almost 90% of the participants were taking pain medication, primarily non-steroidals. And although we know that non-steroidals um, have some therapeutic effect more than just a placebo, the difference is really small. It amounts to less than one point on a 0 to 10 pain scale. 
So really what we're looking at a lot of times with the placebo is the brain. The brain plays such a huge role, especially when it comes to pain. And we know that now with chronic pain that it plays uh, a larger role than the tissues. So when we're looking at the placebo and we're looking at healing, how can we harness our own placebo effect? How can we cause our brains to create a placebo for us so that we can heal? Because we know the brain and nervous system are at the heart of chronic pain, so our treatment should be geared towards the brain. And basically what we're doing is trying to engage this placebo effect. So let's look at the data and the research to show what we can be doing. So this is a 2018 study, a brain imaging study, randomized controlled trial, chronic pain and placebo pills. And what they found here and what the authors state is really interesting because it just mirrors what we're doing here at the Pain PT for recovery. So what they state was this. Placebo pill response was driven primarily by a combination of a greater openness to experience, increased emotional awareness, decreased distraction about pain and discomfort, augmented capabilities in describing inner experiences, which can be pain and other things, and a higher sensitivity to non-painful situations. They go on to say this, and this is really important. Our results reveal that placebo response can be predicted from an ability to recognize subtle cues in the body regarding emotional and physical well-being, to remain attentive to these cues and emotions by not ignoring or suppressing them, and to choose to accept these states as opposed to becoming worried or burdened by them. Now this is exactly what we do here. If you watch some of my other videos, I talk a lot about learning to be open to experiencing pain because there's nothing wrong. To be open to the actual feeling of the physical symptoms and to be open to feeling all our emotions that go with it without ignoring our emotions or suppressing them and to choose to accept these things instead of becoming worried by them or more burdened by them. So. When you have these characteristics in place here, these psychological characteristics, these are the people that respond to the placebo effect the best. And they've shown in this study that these factors of personality were able to differentiate who did respond and who didn't, as well as predict the magnitude of the placebo response. So we're going to look at one last study here that looked at the placebo and another way we can try to work with our brains to engage our own placebo effect. This was a study done, it looked at the, um, in 2017, and it looked at here uh, what's called cognitive reappraisal. Now cognitive reappraisal is the reinterpretation of a meaning or the effective content or the emotional content of adverse events. Now we can consider chronic pain an adverse event. And so they looked at this, they did MRI studies of the brain, looked at cognitive reappraisal, which is changing our thoughts around pain. And we already know from other studies, there's been a lot of meta-analysis or reviews of the literature that show certain areas of the brain are consist consistently activated with the placebo. And some of these are the prefrontal cortex. We already talked a lot about that and its role in chronic pain the anterior cingulate cortex, the periodontal gray, which is called the PAG, insula, the amygdala, which we spoke about as well, and some other areas of the brain. But this study was the first to link the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and its connection to the PAG, periodontal gray, to cognitive reappraisal as a possible underlying mechanism for pain relief. So this is really important because we know here, and this author state that cognitive reappraisal, it's been termed what's called an antecedent focused strategy, meaning we can use this strategy and we can employ it before the onset of an aversive event. So what this means is we learn to view chronic pain as being okay. And we talk a lot about this when we talk about our thoughts and our beliefs, the mental component of pain. When we can change our belief that our thought patterns some something is wrong, that chronic pain is dangerous and threatening, to that chronic pain is fine and that we're okay, we actually engage this placebo effect through the brain, which then can create 
a pain reduction or a placebo response. And this is all real stuff. None of this is fake. This is real stuff. And the power of placebo is becoming more and more known as the research comes out. So last but not least, we'll finalize by saying that we can reduce chronic pain and we can learn to reduce chronic pain by harnessing the power of our own brain placebo. We don't have to take a sugar pill. We don't have to take a pill. We don't have to have a fake surgery done. Sometimes you don't even have to have a real surgery done because what we're showing a lot of times is that the brain is a large portion of the therapeutic effect of pain reduction. So if we can harness that power ourselves, we can get out of pain. And that's what we do here at the Pain PT. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon.